two adults and a juvenile break into a house accompanied by a brother and sister and their stolen children. There, they must fight for their lives. This is Ryan. And this is Ashley. And this is Ruining Ruining Our Childhood. Childhood. A weekly podcast where we remove our childhood goggles and put on our adult bifocals to rewatch and review our favorite movies from the past. That is correct. And if you're just joining us, hi, my name's Ashley. This is Ryan. And this is a podcast where, as Ryan just said, we like to rewatch a lot of our favorite movies. Mm -hmm. We have a large DVD collection. Yes. And we never watch them anymore because, Mm -mm. you know, it's 2019 and... Everything is on Netflix. Yeah. And by everything, I don't mean everything, but it's just so much easier to turn on your TV and hit Netflix and find something there that a DVD seems like a lot of work. I remember a good 10 or 12 years ago when Netflix streaming just had started. Yeah. And we still had the Netflix subscription where they would send us DVDs. Yeah. And you had introduced me like, yeah, we can go on here and watch TV shows and I remember they had weeds. That was basically all they had. That I feel was like. basically it. I felt like this method of distribution of entertainment was going to go away very quickly. That's funny. I yeah, I did not see it having legs. <laughs> I I do remember, and I don't know if we talked about this, but at the time we had just moved in with each other. We'd been living with each other maybe a year or two. Mm-hmm. Didn't have internet. I was no. stealing it from the person that lived below us. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to watch Weeds mm-hmm. on basically like a beta version of Netflix, mm-hmm. and it took forever. <laughs> to the point we went out and bought the seasons. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, Good times. Memories. But anyway, yes. So our podcast is about us rewatching some of our favorite movies. A lot of the movies are from the 90s, early mm-hmm. 2000s, when we were teenagers and young people children i guess yeah this one is a 1991 classic yes the people under the stairs to continue our as you wanted to call it the other day our halloween spooktacular he's doing the face guys i told our friends that i would say if he was doing the weird face he says it It was Um, great when we brought up how we were gonna call it and we were with four of our friends And they collectively groaned. (laughs) (laughs) It was perfect. They all just went, oh. Uh. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, the people under the stairs hit us with some 1991 1991 facts. Yes. Going down memory road. The movie was directed by Wes Craven, Mm -hmm. who directed our movie from last week, Scream. Oh. Uh, it was released on November 1st of 1991, so one day before Rai Rai's birthday. It had a budget of $6 million, and it made $31.4 million. Uh, something that I found interesting was Universal Studios does Halloween Horror Nights as like their Halloween <laughs> festival. It sounded like you said whore. So, uh, they incorporate people under the stairs into some of their mazes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So they, I know like they do Stranger Things and Walking Dead. Yeah. So this is one of the movies that they, I don't know if they still incorporate it. But But they have. They have, yeah. Popular TV shows from 1991 were Roseanne, Murphy Brown, and Cheers. So all good shows. Yeah popular songs the number one song the week the movie came out was mariah carey emotions Uh, other popular songs were extreme more than words unbelievable by emf (laughs) and color me bad i adore me amour oh my god they were the worst looking guys in the world (laughs) they really were if anybody remembers them yeah i just remember the guy who always had a five o'clock shadow and the one with, like, a really pencil-thin mustache might have been the same guy. I think it might have been the same guy. <laughs> he, had, he had a lot of things going on. And, you know, I know this last year the band had gone on Dr. Phil 
because that guy is like out of control. Oh, really? Yeah. Like how? How so? Like drugs? And drugs and oh. alcohol, and he's not reliable to them anymore. So we're well, still hanging in there. That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know they were still together. Yeah. Or maybe performing. They, yeah, maybe they took some breaks over the years. Yeah, I'm so. sure. Lastly, some popular movies: Terminator Two, Judgment Day. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and Beauty and the Beast. Nice. So. Love Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. And Prince uh, Prince of Thieves. Yeah, that's... And Terminator 2. I watched that movie a lot when I was younger. I, Robin I, Hood? Me and my brother, yeah. Yeah. I don't... I had a couple of the action figures. Nice. Like a Robin Hood action figure. That was actually, fun fact, the first movie I ever saw Alan Rickman in. Oh. Because I didn't, you didn't watch see Die Hard, Die Hard <laughs> at... at Two years old? No. No. Mm, I watched it a little later, maybe a couple of years later. Yeah. And then I was thinking, man, he always plays a bad guy. <laughs> and then he was Snape, and that continued until... Spoiler alert. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So, what is your earliest recollection of this movie, The People Under the Stairs? My earliest recollection was you introducing me to it. Oh, Aww. I want to say we had been dating maybe a couple months at that point, because I want to say it was Halloween that year. We were looking for some scary movies, and That's you wanted like to show me it. Then. Yeah, a month into it, you're like, this is one we should watch. <laughs> and I remember I, at that point, had in my head, if it's old, it's cheesy. Right. But then also watching it, going, this movie's pretty fucking creepy. Yeah. <laughs> so... That kind of shot my theory in the foot. I will say, if if we watched this, what, 13 years ago? Mm -hmm. That's probably the last time I watched it. Yeah. But I had seen it a couple of times. I remember it from when I was a child, being one of my earliest memories of a horror movie. Mm -hmm. And the things that I can remember about it are that a kid just goes into this house. It's funny, when I was reading the summary... I remember that there was two adults that go that. I, I think they're trying to break into the house and they rope the kid in with them. I think that might be the plot. Mm -hmm. But I, for some reason, the only thing I can remember was the kid going in the house and him having to go through like the walls, like secret passages and being so freaked out by the, the thought that there was people that lived in a basement and they were the bad people, but not realizing like, no, they're not bad. Yeah. They just look super duper creepy spoiler alert the people under the stairs are not the bad guys yeah uh but i do remember just being completely freaked out by this movie and mm -hmm. i probably shouldn't have watched it at six or seven years old no none of the movies i was watching at that age that were horror movies i had any business watching i find it really surprising that you even were able to watch any of these movies because i feel like your mom was pretty strict with what you guys could watch. But I guess as you get older, your parents don't watch you as much. Yeah. Or they don't... They can't stop you from watching something at a friend's house or... No, my my parents were strict. I don't remember seeing an R-rated movie till I was probably 12. Mm -hmm. But the horror movies were stuff I would catch with my dad. Mm -hmm. My dad would be watching Child's Play. And I would curl up next to him and watch the movie... And I don't think my dad, it was usually the, you know, made for TV version of it. Not made so for like TV, edited. but it was edited. Yeah. And I don't think my dad had the TV guide open next to him and saw, hey, this is an R-rated movie. My son has no business watching this. So the curse words were cut out. My dad thought they were pretty funny. He found the <laughs> cheesiness. We've covered this before. Yeah. Whereas I'm the one who's going to have a nightmare about Chucky or that my, my buddy doll is going to turn into Chucky. Yeah. <laughs> But my mom, if they had seen this movie was in the theater and it's an R-rated, there's no way in heck they were taking me to go see that right. in public. It was he catching said, it no at home. No way in heck. No way in heck. <laughs> You're so innocent. Yeah. I think what, for me, like growing up, my parents were always working and sometimes they just wouldn't be around. So we'd pretty much watch whatever. Mm -hmm. It's funny because I'm thinking about does this movie hold up? And I think it will. But I think what I thought was scary when I was six or seven when I saw this movie is not going to be the same. Yeah. I think it's going to be kind of culturally irrelevant because mm -hmm. there's there's some 
themes in there that are probably still kind of relevant to today, like racism. And so I, I think there's going to be some relevant stuff. And I, I think it will still be creepy. Yeah, I do think so. Do you agree? I think it's going to hold up. But I agree with you, though. I don't know. It's hard because I know I've only seen this movie one time. Yeah. So I'm going to go holds up. Okay. So I hope I hope it scares me again. It's, I think it's going to be one of those things where I don't think it's going to scare us, but I think we're going to be disturbed <laughs> Too by the things that we see in this movie, if I can remember correctly. Mm. So where you can catch this if you don't own it on DVD like we do... <laughs> Pretty much, you just have to rent it, or there's a subscription app called Fubo. Fubo? Fubo? F-U-B-O TV? Is this the first time I've... It looks like it's a live-in-demand TV service. Hmm. I feel like there's a new one every week. There really is. Um, Where you can subscribe to it, and there's a free trial, apparently. Oh. And But you can access actual channels like Fox, CBS, even AMC and TNT. Oh, so nice. Apparently that's something you can do. So and it's available. Free trial. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. We're not sponsored by them, but nope. do, you do you. And that that's the only one it says where it's streaming. Oh. So otherwise you're going to have to rent it off the usual renting apps. Because this is going with my theory that these streaming services remove... The Halloween movies. They're like, during it's Halloween October. Season. Yep. Remove all. So that way people have to rent them or go buy them. Or remove all the good ones that people would actually want to watch and the, not the ones that are with C-list actors yeah. that are horribly written. They all star Corey Feldman. Oh. And were made last year. Not Corey Feldman in 1986 when he was a great actor. Oh. <laughs> Sad. Anyway, shall we hit the... Pause it, pause. Yes, I was trying to remember if we hit everything because we've been kind of bad lately, like forgetting to do our little points, yeah. talking points. God, I can't talk today. I'm like, uh, So anyway, we're going to go ahead and hit the pause pause, go watch The People Under the Stairs, and come back and talk about it. Yeah. And we're back. We just finished watching People Under the Stairs. And first thing we're going to do is go to the old phone booth to call the 14th precinct and talk about some technology. What pieces of technology did you notice? There wasn't a lot. No. Mm -mm. Because this whole movie is set in this creepy-ass house that doesn't look like it's been cleaned since 1930. Yeah. And there was just some little things. Uh, the only one I noted, well, there's two that I noted, but the first one was a small box television mm -hmm. that Fool finds in the basement that is playing. It's when he first sees all the people under the stairs. Mm -hmm. And apparently they get a TV, so I guess it's not all bad. For them. Yeah, and it was playing like golf war footage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The one that I kind of already mentioned was there was an old phone booth. I thought it was interesting. He went over to the phone booth and dialed 911. Yeah. And they just answered the phone and said 14th precinct. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. very professional. Yeah. Say 911. I noticed when Fool was in the old house, they apparently had a clock somewhere. And it was one of those, my grandparents had one, I think my parents had one, where it goes, ding, ding, ding. Oh, yeah. yeah. One of those chiming ones, which I think every old person has. Yeah. Uh, there was, like, a grandfather clock and mm -hmm. some stuff like that. And their old voice recorder that they used at the end of the movie to trick fool into thinking they're just having a conversation when they really know he's snuck into the house. Yeah. Which I'm like, how did you know he's snuck into the house? And how did you know to go set up and play this recording? How did you know to make this recording of you saying goodnight prayers? 
Yeah. It wasn't like something they pre-made, because these people are really prepared yeah. for anything. But it specifically talked about him in the recording, so they had to have done it in the last day. Yeah. They're just really prepared people. Very you know? prepared. They're very prepared murderers. <laughs> so, yeah. The only other thing I noticed was uh, just a corded telephone that was on a wall. Yeah, that was it. And their whole, like, contraption of their security stuff, but it was, like, really old school sw- switches, and, and they had, a like, a PA system, too. Yeah. To talk to each other. It was just A very amazing. weird, weird house with lots of hidden doors. For sure. We'll talk about that in a little bit. There wasn't really any DVD special features or trailers, which bummed me out. Mm-hmm. Did you have anything on the soundtrack? Just that song <laughs> that was playing at the end. Yeah. Which I already forgot who sang it. It was Do the Right Thing was yeah. the name of the song, and it was... Something with the FBI? Yeah. Which, when I heard the song, I thought it was Will Smith Yeah, singing. the the rapper did sound like yeah. Will Smith. It was, uh, the artist was Redhead Kingpin and the FBI. Okay. Yeah. Which I, that, I didn't hear a lot of songs in the movie, so. No, it was yeah. mostly just, just random instrumental music. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was, I didn't have anything for that either. Mm-mm. Do you want to move on? Yes. Okay. The next category is called, kids would call it a throwback, we call it the prime of our teens, or in this case, I was five Mm -hmm. when this movie came out, and I saw it when I was like seven or eight, but where we talk about fashion choices, offensive jokes, and dated references, I didn't actually have tons of notes in this category just because there was definitely some offensive things, and I did note some fashion. Uh, What did you see? Uh, right away, the main character, Fool, was oh. wearing a short sleeve shirt that had a hood on it. Oh, yeah. Which I had a bunch of when I was a kid. I don't know what that hood was for, but it was there. It was a thing. I don't think I ever used the actual hood portion. The other thing was the character, Leroy. He's wearing a leather beanie skull thing. Yeah. It's kind of weird. The only other person I've ever really seen wear that is Jim Brown, and he always has one on. But underneath his hat, you can see he has short hair. Uh huh. And then at the bottom, like below his ears, you see the hair gets really long. Huh. So it's kind of like a modified mullet slash like a ducktail. It's a weird haircut. It's nice. What pieces did you notice? I just, uh, I, I noted that the man and the woman, which that's what we'll refer them to because yeah. that's literally their name in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're the people that own the house. They dress like they're in the 40s or 50s. Mm-hmm. And I guess it just goes with their ideals of who they are as people and their strict yeah. upbringing that they have for their daughter, where I'm using air quotes because, spoiler alert, she's not really their daughter. But it just makes it kind of creepy and sets the tone. Because it's obviously modern day because of what Fool and Leroy are wearing. Mm -hmm. And you you know it's modern day, but when you step into that house, it's like this creepy going back in time. Yeah. Weirdness. She was wearing like a... uh house dress yeah that's what they call them. Mm-hmm. yeah and then her, she had her hair up in like victory rolls yeah is what they called them yeah. she looks like peggy carter yeah but not as pretty or charming <laughs> more and creepy and not nearly as charming. creepy and then the other thing i noted was roach all of his clothes were tattered but i did notice in the one of the end scenes i mean end for him because spoiler alert he dies. Of course. He's wearing black Converse. Yeah. And they're like pretty new looking. And I I noticed um Fool was wearing white Chuck Taylors. Yeah. But his were tattered and had yeah. holes. Yeah. I just thought it was weird that a person that's been living in a house and the walls basically has some really nice... Yes. Other than, obviously later they talk about how they've murdered several people. So I wonder if he's stolen clothes from the random people that they've murdered. You know? Yeah, I mean, why you know, wouldn't you? It's being resourceful. He's, yeah. Roach is a very resourceful person, so. Very true. The last one that I noted was Spencer, 
who he goes up to the door claiming to be a gas man at one point and wants to check the gas meter. And then also, at one point, the man has on a baseball cap, and it reminded me of the hats that I would wear when I was real little. It had yeah. a string that would run across the... the top of the... Yeah, yeah, like at the base by the bill. My dad had a couple of those. Yeah, my grandpa would still wear them, and I believe that is how the MAGA hats are. The Make oh. America Great Again hats. Interesting. Do you want to move on to offensive jokes mm-hmm. and data references? There's quite a few. I just had one. Oh, okay. <laughs> but go you, well, then you can go ahead and start then. Well, I, I probably have the same one, but I did remember there's a part early on when they're kind of introducing the man and the woman and Alice is their daughter. Mm-hmm. And they're talking about the apartment complex that Fool and his family live in. Mm-hmm. And she's like, we need to clear out that last family so we can get clean people in there and... It's just, obviously, you know that they have issues with people that are black. Yeah. And they're just the worst sort of people because they, not only do they not like these people, but they actively murder them, so. Yeah. No, and mine kind of goes along in that line. Uh, At one point, they referred to them by a racial slur that we wouldn't use. It's it's one of those things that's like it's definitely a dated and offensive thing, but it also sets it up so you know what kind of people you're dealing with. Yeah. It definitely builds the character and lets you develop some hatred towards them. <laughs> I th- there were some just like slightly offensive things that Leroy would say, the character of Leroy who yeah. is basically fool's sister's boyfriend. He's just kind of hanging around. Yeah. They don't ever really develop that. He was nice and was teaching Fool a trait, which was called breaking into houses. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. But do you want to move on? Yes. Our next category is called Well Hello There, where we talk about any cameos of famous or recognizable actors and actresses that we forgot were in the movie. And there was some. Yeah. (laughs) There was a some. Yeah. What was the first one? Uh, first one, we've talked about him. Leroy is Ving Rhames. Yes. Trying to remember this movie, I knew somebody was pretty famous that was that played one of the people that he breaks into the house with when I remembered that mm-hmm. there was two other people. So when I saw him, I was like, oh, yeah, Ving Rhames played him. I did want to note that Fool is played by Brian or uh, Brandon, sorry, Brandon Quinton Adams, mm-hmm. who literally was in every single childhood favorite movie he was in mighty ducks he was in sandlot he was on the fresh prince of bel-air yeah he was in a couple michael jackson music videos like smooth criminal mm-hmm. so he was that's on a thing. moesha he was on sister sister boy meets world he's in a bunch of stuff when we yeah. were a kid well when we were a kid yeah when we were kids. Yeah, he was... But he's just, like, the most notable person that I recognize in this movie in the sense of, like, mm-hmm. my childhood. The first time I watched it, I went, hey, it's Jesse Hall from Mighty yeah. Ducks. Like, that's what I knew him from. And then I did want to point out A.J. Langer, who plays Alice. Mm-hmm. She was in My So-Called Life. That's the main one I knew her from. Yeah, and then more recently, Private Practice... And then she really hasn't acted in the last couple years. Oh. Which I don't don't know why, but I always liked her. Uh, One of the ones I noticed was Everett McGill. He uh, plays the one that we refer to as man, because that's his character. I remember him from the movie My Fellow Americans with Jack Lemmon and uh, James Gardner. He played the bad guy in that one. Go figure. You know, figure he has but, he has a face for it. But other things he was in right off the bat is he was on Twin Peaks, the oh, okay. original, and then also the new episodes that they've made. So was the actress that played the woman. She was uh, in Twin Peaks as well because I was looking at her, Wendy Robbie. Uh huh. Her Roby. 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 She's also in Twin Peaks. Creepy ass people. Uh, creepy ass people. And another one that I noticed, uh, we've kind of talked about him, um, is Roach, which was played by Sean Whalen. Yes. And he was in a, he's been in a bunch of stuff. He's been on Superstore, Never Been Kissed. He was in Twister. Yeah, we talked about him in Play of the Month because he's in Employee of the Month. That too. 
Yeah. So he's just been in a ton of, ton of stuff. The other one was Bill Cobbs, who I had a an issue with his character in the sense that they introduced him at the very end. Yeah. In the beginning, they show Fool with his family, his mm-hmm. sister, and his mom who has who's dying from cancer. Mm-hmm. Just to you know, add to the bleakness of this movie, and they don't ever show his grandpa. But then all of a sudden, when he escapes the house and he goes back home, his grandpa's there to be like, "Yeah, I know those people are murderers. Everybody knows those people are murderers, dummy." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's in. Bill Cobbs has been in like everything. Yes. That's that's all I can say about him. He's been in uh, that thing you do. He was on Go On with Matthew Perry. He's been in like every single TV show. Yes. Did at least like one or two episodes. He's just one of those actors that literally does everything. Yeah. So going back to, I think his first acting credit was in 1974. That's awesome. Also, fun fact: he's from the land. Oh, so the land, Cleveland. The land. Yes. And the other person I just wanted to note was the guy who played Spencer, who was the other guy who broke into the house. His name's Jeremy Roberts. He's been in a bunch of stuff, but the thing I remember him from, why he looks so familiar, is he plays one of the officers that breaks into the house in National Lampoon Christmas Vacation. And he think he has, like, a line. Oh, okay. Yeah. And nice. he was also in The Mask, so okay. and a couple other things. But he was just familiar to me because he had yeah. a line in Christmas Vacation, which I love that movie. So That's a delightful movie. Um, did you have anybody else? No, those were the only ones that I had. Okay. Let's move on to Is It Even Good? Where we talk about the plot and plot holes. Yeah. Which is kind of a new thing we're doing. Because, I mean, we obviously always talk about the plot holes, yeah. but we never, never officially gave it say it. Yeah. yeah. And we talk about our funniest and cringiest moments of this movie. What did you think about the plot? I think right away it's easy to go, that's not believable. People would keep people underneath the stairs and stuff. But then there was that SOB named Ariel Castro who kidnapped girls and kept them in his basement for like 10 years. That's true. So sadly, kind of believable. It's believable in the sense that it can happen. Mm -hmm. The grand scale of how many people were down there seems a little unbelievable, but it, it, it... it's a movie. What can you say? Yeah. But there was like 20 guys down there. Mm-hmm. And, and and people already kind of knew that this was happening. And it was like, it's cool because they're rich. And everybody suspected them. And yeah, but there knew was they were evidence. terrible people. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. But I agree. Having watched a lot of true crime documentaries and mm-hmm. obviously it can happen. Mm-hmm. But that many people that are alive together... Seems a little... Without them having to move, you yeah. know? Serial killers have to move sometimes, you know? Yeah. No, they're just keeping bodies in their basement. Yeah. But it was also a funeral home. That's true. Well, now we'll move on to plot holes, where we kind of talk about everything that's wrong with this movie. Yes. <laughs> or questionable. Uh, what was one of your first ones? One of my biggest plot holes is... Fool was trapped inside that house, and he had to do a lot to escape. Yes. The windows are locked shut, and there's not an easy way to get out of that house. So he had to, like, jump off a roof to get out. But then he goes back in the house by himself. Yeah. And the house that he watched, Leroy get killed in, saw Spencer get killed. So I'm like, why are you going back by yourself? It's take one... your sister, take your grandpa. I mean, they do show up at the door later, but he's in there by himself. It makes you wonder, did they devise this plan with him? Like, yeah, go ahead and go in there by yourself. Yes. We'll come a little later. We'll knock <laughs> on the door and pretend that we're just... You got this. Yeah. We'll be, you'll be fine. We'll hang out. out, and We'll just be in the car listening to some music. Got the heat going, trying to stay warm. You get in there. You do your thing. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. But they did They did call the police, but not saying, hey, you should go check this out yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was like a diversion plan. <laughs> yeah. Which made no sense to me. I, I was laughing because there was a point where in the beginning of the movie, Leroy is telling Fool that he is lucky, that he's teaching him how to break into a house and learn that trade, like mm-hmm. you said. 
but he is not great at it. No. He just starts breaking stuff without really knowing if there's actually people in the house. Yeah. And he just has no plan because he's just so worried that his partner, Spencer, is going to... Stealing that coin collection. Yeah. He's going to screw him out of his cut. So he just goes in without a plan and just starts breaking stuff. And mm-hmm. and it's like, no wonder you got killed, Leroy. I'm yeah. sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Another one I kind of had was at one point, the man runs into this room in the house that is covered with candles that Hazard. are lit. Yes. So when did they light these? They're just always lit. And there's all these pictures on the wall. Of children. Children that I don't, but there's no real explanation of what that was. There's that small explanation from Alice that they have kidnapped a lot of boys. Mm-hmm. Well, she didn't even say that they kidnapped. They She just said that they were trying to find the perfect boy. Yeah. To go with her as the perfect girl. Mm-hmm. And they have never been successful in it. And that's what all the boys in the basement are. Yeah. My thing is, a lot of those... Well, once you see all the kids in the basement, they're not really kids. They're pretty old. Yeah. So um, I wonder if they're still planning and or actively kidnapping people because it seemed like they stopped doing it after a while because I think Roach looked like the youngest mm-hmm. and he still looked like he was 20 and at least. And why, once you decided they weren't candidates, right. for lack of a better term, why didn't you just kill them? Right? I mean, not to be blunt, but... Why are you keeping them? I don't know. They, But it seems like they also try to use them as a way to murder people. Spencer got literally scared to death. Yeah. That was another kind of plot hole I wanted to cover was that he got scared to death from seeing these boys that look like vampires, I guess, is the best way to describe yeah. them. Vampires slash zombies. Because they haven't seen sun in quite some time. Yeah. And they have a bunch of scars because they've also been, like, abused. And Mm -hmm. the man has cut off their tongues and cut off whatever else he sees fit. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know what their whole thing is because I don't know if they're supposed to be cannibals. It kind of made it seem like they are cannibals, but they never, like, fully say, hey, they eat people. Yeah. Or if they're just... Because they're so sheltered inside their thing, they're just kind of like, oh, there's meat here. I'm going to eat it. I got to eat. <laughs> yeah. They don't really know the difference, I guess. I don't know. That part was very full of holes. Yes. Another one that I had was after Fool called the 14th Precinct, the police show up at the house. Yeah. And you talked about how the house was very disheveled and old and there's kind of dirty. When they walk in... And the police are there. The woman is walking around giving people coffee and cookies. And the house is very clean. Yeah. So they just run around and clean up years of dust and grime in two seconds. Apparently. Because yeah. even the parts that were you could tell they live, they're a little nicer, but they're still disheveled. And then there's parts of the house that they must not go into. Like that bathroom that Fool oh. meets Alice for the first time. The grotiest bathroom ever. Yeah. I think there's a part of the house, like another wing of the house that they don't go into. Okay. But I I will say that the living room did look way nicer after the police came. Yeah. And after they've been chasing somebody around and shooting the gun like crazy, breaking shit. Yeah. He it shot very... a ton of holes in the walls. Yeah. It's questionable. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, I did, I did like the part where Fool is in the house, it's early on, and he sees that the man and the woman are coming back home, Mm -hmm. and he jumps over the dining room table instead of just going around, and I'm like, that just seems like it took more effort to do that instead of just walking around the table. Totally unnecessary. Yeah. It was just funny. Another one that I noted was when Fool has confronted the man in the basement, and He's going to blow up the house. Mm-hmm. So he blows it up. And they had a lot of money in that house. Yeah. So there was money kind Just, of floating. Yeah. At that point, an angry mob of all their tenants had showed up at the house. So there's money, but the house just blew up. 
And they're like running up to the house trying to get this money that's floating down and going into, you know this is an active crime scene. What are you doing? But there's money floating around. A couple bucks. You don't know. Three hundred dollar <laughs> bills. That's true. I'm just they're just trying to get their money back, man. Yeah. I wouldn't go on because the house could still there could be more That's explosives. True. No, it it was kind of a crazy ending of the movie. Yeah. But the one thing I did want to note was the man's full leather like sex suit. Gimp outfit. Gimp yeah, it was <laughs> basically gimp out it just I, I'm not quite sure why he needs to wear that when he's hunting down Roach or Fool. Yeah. I, I just feel like it's a time waster. Like, ah, I can't follow these kids around. Let me just get my suit on. And then it's something really sexual between him and his sister. Yeah. Curveball. Come to fo- find out that they're not mommy and daddy like they like to call each other. Yes. They're brother and sister and... They've never really implied that there's a sexual relationship, but they're, uh, but then they did. Yeah, they didn't like full on say it. Just, it was just so many things wrong with this movie that when I was a kid, I did not understand. Yeah, no, I didn't pick up on even I was I wasn't even a kid. I was an adult the first time I saw it. I didn't pick up on some of the stuff. You were your early twenties. You might yeah. as well have been a child. That's true. Also, like the house is soundproof. Yeah. Fool was at the window, banging on the window, and when you could hear came. the glass hitting the security grate that was on the outside. So the police could hear that. But then they couldn't, because they showed a scene of him from the outside. Yeah, so He's banging on it, used. and there's no noise coming out. It's like out. a force field. <laughs> Magical force field. Magical force field. It makes you question because he's shooting the gun off like crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how come nobody's hearing this at all? Yeah. they Their neighbors are really close. They're not far away. And you saw, there's a lot of the movie where Fool is running between walls. Yes. You see how old that house is. Right. It doesn't even have sheetrock walls. Right. It's super old. It's not soundproof. It's not. And obviously... Knives can go through the front door, which begs the question, how hard was it to really break open that door if Fool was trying to get out? Very true. Because towards the end, Alice's mom is, or the woman, yeah. is chasing around with a knife, also made made of vibranium. Correct. Like the knife in Scream 2. And Black it, Panther. Yes. <laughs> and she just cuts to the door. Like nothing. I think... Fool could have punched it and been out of that house in five minutes. It was either vibranium or a solid 1990s product, a Ginsu. Ooh. Mm. It could have been. Could have been. I don't feel like those people were the buy from as seen on TV. Yeah, they weren't QVC shoppers. No. They, they didn't even have a TV downstairs, I don't uh, think. I don't think they did. Just in the basement, playing that golf war footage. Why? I don't know. Why? They wanted their kidnapped children to be comfortable yeah at some point (laughs) at some point uh it's great do you want to move on to our funniest and most cringiest parts of the movie absolutely my funniest moment was when fool and leroy were in the house and the man and woman have now come home yeah and they're trying to figure a way out and they can't and the man and woman let their dog Prince into the house. And yes. it's a big like Doberman R- or R- Rottweiler. So Leroy hides behind a couch and he tells Fool to just stand there because he's like, so the minute the dog comes in, I'm going to hit it. So <laughs> Fool's standing there. The dog just stops. <laughs> and you could tell Leroy was going, where's this dog? So he pops his head up and the dog then attacks Leroy. Right. So Leroy... And Fool are trying to get out. So Fool grabs Leroy's hand. The dog is on Leroy's other hand. They go to the door and they get electrocuted. Yes. (laughs) And they just stand there and go like... It it was a cheesy, like a kid's movie. Yeah. Electrocution. That's the best way to describe it. Yeah. So it was just... There wasn't a ton of humor in this movie, but that was delightful. It was that part. And then there was the part where Fool Mm -hmm. is throwing bricks down the chimney and i was like this is kevin McAllister's protege yeah. protege he's he actually taught kevin McAllister. 
Oh, yeah. Because this movie came out before. That's true. What? Home Alone came out in 92? But he chucked the bricks in Home Alone 2. That's true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. he learned from Fool. Yeah. And Fool is a good brick dropper because he, like, knocked the dude the hell out. Because it just a tad more realistic because we've always said in Home Alone 2 <laughs> that there's no way those two would still be alive after he threw those bricks. He's, like, on a four-story building. Yes. Just chugging bricks down. But that's just a, a totally different movie. Yeah. Sorry. Mine was just something that Fool said to Prince the Rottweiler when he was trying to get... The first time they see the dog, they're trying to distract him when they break into the house. Mm -hmm. And he's like, your mama sleeps with cats. I was like, that's such a 13-year-old comeback. Uh, uh, Top notch. He was full of those lines where he just says random shit. And I'm like, he talks like a kid, so that's cool. Yeah. Did, uh, what was your cringiest? It was kind of really a moment where I went, what the hell was that? Was Fool and Alice are in Alice's room, and the man is in there, and he's going to attack them. Yeah. And he goes to run at Fool, who just steps six inches to the right, and the guy runs right into a wall. He's not good at it. And then things. Fool turns and breaks a lamp over the guy. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. It kind of goes back with the cheesy electrocution moment where it was kind of like a really Looney Tunes moment. Yeah. It was pretty stupid. I, I agree. Yeah. I, w- I had a couple different cringy moments, but I think the thing that was the cringiest for me is just every single time the man and the woman called each other mommy and daddy. Yeah. It was just disturbing and cringy. Yeah. One of those moments where you want to go... Bleh. Like, just stop. <laughs> stop. Just stop. Stop. Um, did you have any additional notes? I had, a, I had a couple. When Fool goes to the house and he's dressed as a boy scout or I think he's a bear scout. <laughs> yeah. He goes over by the pond. The whole time all this happens, there is this excessive bird chirping. And it really irritated the crap out of me. It was I just... Chirp, 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 probably chirp. wasn't done on purpose. Yeah. It was I, I thought of that scene in the beginning of the movie where he's at the house and then when uh, Spencer goes in after. Mm-hmm. But it just seemed like the lady or the woman was at the door the whole time just waiting. Mm-hmm. And there was this... When she lets in Spencer, she lets him in and she opens the little window, which it's... A window door where you can see out whether you open it or not. Yeah. But she opens the little door and she looks around like maybe there's somebody else around. Mm-hmm. It was just kind of funny. I just, I loved the beginning scene where Fool's going into his dilapidated apartment complex. That it was the shittiest apartment complex. Yes. There was just a party of drug addicts just hanging out in Crack the front. Head city. Yeah. And they're really trying to prove a point like, look where this kid lives. <laughs> And there's a room full of dogs yeah. inside the building fighting for scraps yeah. of a dead carcass. So it's kind of like when he went to the other house, it wasn't that scary because he already lived in a really scary place. Yeah. When Fool and Alice were trying to escape together, mm-hmm. they go up onto the roof. They're, you'd kind of talked about where he was going to, th- he threw the brick down. Yeah. They're walking across the roof. At the very peak of the house, like it's a tightrope. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Alice is scared to go outside because she's never been outside, apparently. Yeah. Well, since she got kidnapped. I mean, and Fool lives in Skid Row. Yeah. You should be used to that. Oh, yeah, for sure. I also wanted to point out that, and I've noticed this in a lot of movies that we've seen, where my memory of characters or plots of the movie are almost exaggerated with time. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when I was a kid, one of the characters I loved most in this movie was Roach. Yeah. I thought he was funny. He, you know, he really stepped up to his situation. Mm -hmm. He escaped from the little pin that they kept him in, and he roamed the back hallway things where apparently they're just made for prints to roam around. Yeah. Really wide... Because there's a ton of doggy and doors yeah. and stuff like that. And I don't know, when I think of this movie, I think of him, but he's really not in that much of the movie. No. And he dies pretty quickly. He's probably in about 10 minutes of yeah. it. But I 
I remembered that character. And yeah. Still, I had that same opinion of him. I, you know, he helps helps the kid out a lot. And yeah. Like, oh, he he dies really quick. Yeah, like he helps fool out for like five minutes, and then he gets shot and dies. Yeah. So, spoiler alert. Yeah. But do you want to move on to our final thoughts? Yes. And our awards. Our awards. <laughs> As always, on Ruining Our Childhood, it's award season. We give out two awards every week, the first of which is the valedictorian to the Nicolas Cage Online School of Bad Acting. Who did you give your award to? I gave mine to the character of the man, uh, the man. Everett McGill. Uh, when Roach has bested him, mm-hmm. he yells into the walls, I'm going to kill you! And it is just so overacted. And from then on, he gets crazier Mm -hmm. and cheesier and just over the top. And when I was a kid, that really scared me. I thought he was the scariest part of the movie. But now as an adult, I think the woman is way scarier. I think his appearance and his demeanor helps with that. He has yeah. this very monotone tone when he talks. He is stone-faced. He looks like a serial killer. Yeah, he looks so... I think that could have definitely played into your opinion of him when you were a kid. But now, I couldn't help. Every time he yelled, I thought he was doing his best Jim Carrey impression. But this is before Jim Carrey was a thing. Yes. So did Jim Carrey steal this from him? I literally wrote that in I my notes. Too. When he um, was... Dancing around in the hall. When he thought he killed Fool. Yeah, and he's singing, I got him. I immediately went, oh my god, that's a very Jim Carrey thing to be doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like you said, this is much prior to Jim Carrey being a thing. Yeah. I felt like the woman's behavior was scary, especially the scene where she's forcing Alice to take a bath in super hot water, and she's just like scrubbing her. It was just very disturbing and alarming. Yeah. Who did you have? I gave it to the character of Ruby Williams, which uh-huh. is full sister. Yeah. Which uh, was played by Kelly Jo Minter, mm-hmm. was her name. Because I thought his family was essentially pointless. Even when she comes up to the door at the end of the movie, uh, when Fool's already inside, I just felt like she was a poor person's Rosie Perez. Oh. <laughs> and I thought she was pointless. Like, the movie... Could have not had her in it, and it would have been perfectly fine. Yeah, for sure. She was just there to kind of set up his character. Yeah, but I thought Ving Rhames, Leroy, did a much better job. That's true. Yeah. And her purpose of being there and trying to save her brother at the end was kind of pointless. Yeah. It was half-assed. Like, maybe, do you even want your brother to live? (laughs) (laughs) Uh... Shall we move on to the Thomas J. Hanks Award for Exceptional Acting? Who did Mm -hmm. you give yours to? I gave it to the character of Fool, played by Brandon Adams. I did, too. You did, too? I I just thought he was easily the best part of this movie. It's interesting that he played such a major part in this movie, whereas in Mighty Ducks, he kind of gets lost in the shuffle in those movies. But I thought he was a great actor, and was just he carries this movie. Yeah. He does. He's likable. And mm-hmm. I think it's something that in all of the horror movies that I've seen is kind of hard to portray because there will be a lead that you're like, mm, I don't really care if they die yeah. or live. Yeah. But he's he's likable and you want him to survive and he says some funny lines. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe that's why they showed his apartment kind of in disarray because he was scared when he was in that house. But I think coming from a place of poverty and he just he was just like you know what it's just another day for me but not really because there's not psycho murders murdering trying to murder him every five seconds but no he didn't seem as phased as some people would be yeah he was very a tough kid streetwise i mean like we said he lives in a crack den so apparently a very crowded crack a very active yeah almost like it was staged (laughs) (laughs) almost like this is fake yeah I did like the line where he comes and saves Alice. You talked about the scene where he is in her room and the man comes in and he hits him over the head with a lamp and also punches him in the, the nuts. Yeah. Which is very another Kevin McAllister move. Go for the and nut he, uh, Alice is like, he killed you. 
And he's like, he exaggerated. <laughs> I also like the part where, and I'm not saying this because... We have two lovely dogs. I love them, and I would not condone violence, but he punched the dog in the face. Yes. And just the noise the dog made. I'm okay with this because that dog did try to murder him several times. I'm just thinking, it did not look like a fake dog. That's true. That's a good point. Now I feel bad. PETA would not be happy with this movie. It definitely was a fake dog. dog when it died, though. Yeah. It was a very... I don't... Like, maybe they couldn't get the actor dog to, like, just lay there. I don't know. And I kind of forgot to mention this, but now that you mentioned the dog, there's a point where the dog goes sliding down the stairs. Yeah. And he just kind of slides out from a cupboard into the kitchen. There's so many little... There was five instances of people falling downstairs or when they hit the button that turned the stairs this into is a, a ramp. House. Exactly. I want to live in this house. Not with the murdery people, but just... No, take the murdery people out. But yeah, there was a ton of cool passages and yeah. fun stuff. It's one of the things I do remember from the movie as a child is I wish I had like secret passages and mm-hmm. stuff, but I also don't want, you know, the people trying to murder me or, you know, the random kidnapped children downstairs i could deal with the kidnapped children i don't want the ones that are trying to kill me that's true should we get down to our final thought of does this movie hold up i do not think it does did a A dot i don't think it did i enjoyed watching it but it was almost a guilty pleasure watching it and just kind of taking all these notes about how quirky and cheesy it is at times yeah it was still a decent movie to watch and i would watch it again but i thought it was going to be scarier and just a better all-around movie i decided that it does hold up but for similar reasons there's definitely things about it that are campier Mm -hmm. or you know cheesier in a way and makes it doesn't hold up as much but i think it still does because i it was still like a pretty easy story to follow there's parts that were pretty scary or mm-hmm. at least there were some jump scares, like when the dog comes out for the first time. Like I, I jumped a little because I forgot about yeah. the dog. I think the acting was pretty good for the most part. The craziness of the man and the woman was where it kind of lost me in the sense that sometimes they were so over the top. But I felt like the woman kind of saved the for me for both their performances because she was so psychologically crazy Mm because she wanted a perfect daughter and the minute she like threw her daughter into the thing of blood to clean it and then she was like you got your dress dirty and it just it was like so fucked up but yeah that's the thing that scares me now is the psychological Mm -hmm. of it but i also felt like the ending kind of sucked in a way just letting all those victims just roam free yeah. Like these kids that haven't been outside in how many years that don't have tongues. Yeah. They possibly are cannibals. We haven't decided that. Could be. And I, who who else knows? Like, psychologically, they're going to be screwed up. I feel like yeah. victims advocates should be coming and helping them. <laughs> Something that I just kind of thought about was how similar this would be to the first season of American Horror Story. A little bit, yeah. There's a lot of similarities. Like with the, the gimp costume yeah. and the creepy ass house. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I, I just personally I didn't think it held up and I can see why you did. I think if we were to ever show this to children, they'd be freaked out. But I, I'm assuming this movie had to have scared adults in our time. But now we've gotten and we've said this several times that Now it's almost 30 years later and our movies have gotten scarier over the years. Mm -hmm. Not, honestly, I'm not that big into horror movies anymore because I don't think they're pretty cliche now, but there was a, there was a good couple years where I felt like there was some really good horror movies. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. We don't always agree. No, we don't. That, that's the end. The end. Thank you for making us part of your week. And if you'd be so inclined to go give us a review and maybe a subscribe over on the Apple Podcast app. Yes, or any podcast app that you see fit. There's a like button. You know, just show us that you're out there. Mm -hmm. 
And for all of our listeners, we really appreciate you Mm -hmm. taking the time to listen to us Mm -hmm. and possibly maybe even following us on one of our social media platforms like Instagram at Ruining Our Childhood. Facebook at Ruining Our Childhood. And Twitter at ROC Movie Podcast. Yes. So, again, thank you so much for listening, guys. We'll see you next week with another amazing horror movie for our... Halloween spooktacular. (laughs) Uh, We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.